everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today I have the April Up Crate which is the monthly art subscription box from Germany. They have changed it up again. They don't seem to be able to make up their mind on their the, how their boxes look in their image. They're, they've kept the same sort of style but they've changed the box again. Mine's a wee bit bashed, it's been in the wars a wee bit so I'm hoping that we're okay. This is Up Crate number 32 and I kind of like this feature of have little eyes in there. So let's get into the box and I'll show you what is inside it today. Okay so this is our bottle post, this is our magazine and we are on what feels a bit more like recycled paper. So hopefully the format of this hasn't changed again because I have trouble keeping up with that. But this has got details of the art supplies and loads of inspiration, motivation and information about art in general to get your creative juices flowing. So we'll look at that in a little minute. Our co-captain is Leon Ferrin and this looks like a... Oh, it's a booklet. Oh, and it's upside. Oh, no, it's not upside down. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing with this. I want to shape my life with art and my life should shape art. Okay, so we're flipping that way. Okay, I get it now. I thought that was going to fold out into a poster. If this is an indication of the supplies, uh, this is going to be an interesting box. Really bright, bold art style, which I like. Very different. Very nice indeed. Okay, so we know about our co-captain. We have our stickers here and some of these are created uh, by the featured artist. Edding and upgrade, so edding, I think they're all, but there's probably going to be markers then. But anyway, I like the fact that the stickers are all in one sheet now and um, that you have a nice selection there and these ones are very bright and cheerful as well. Yeah, they've even made the inside of the box fancy, look at this, have fun. Okay, what have we got here? Edding, oh, permanent acrylic. Acrylic and oil artist pad, eight sheets, 300 GSM. It kind of has to be if it's going to take acrylic. Oh, we might be getting acrylic markers then. Adding acrylic, yeah, there's like we're adding acrylic markers here. I think we've had some of those before. I might be mistaken. So A5, uh, we'll have a wee feel at that in just a wee minute. It is FSC approved. So it's uh, firmed responsibly, basically. On to the supplies. <sighs> Okay, this um this is a Viking pencil. I cannot pronounce the name that's on the back. And it's a number four. And it's got <laughs> it's got a really off-center core. If I twist it like this, you can see one side's almost completely covered by the wood casing, and the other side you can see the lead. Uh yeah, okay, so cheap pencil, noted. I don't know what it is about upcrate and chunky markers. We've got two gigantic, and like one of them's double-ended as well. This is ridiculous. Permanent acrylic, two to three millimetres and one nib, five to ten millimetre. Okay, let's just open this up. Let's just... I, I literally use these markers for whatever, um, you know, well, in this case, it'll be the upcrate battle, and then I never use them again. Does this twist? Oh. Oh, that's bad. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. There must be refillable, the fact that we can twist that off. Oh, right. Okay, now this is interesting. Um, it's basically a squeezy tube. This is not a marker. It is, it's kind of like, um, I don't really know how to describe this. It puts me in mind of an icing nozzle that, that you'd use for cake decorating. That's the only way I can describe it. And it's kind of rectangular. Uh, okay, this is in. So this is going to be like squeezing toothpaste out a tube. Oh my god, this one's the same but it's much wider. Oh, this is going to be so messy. So they're wanting us to make bold strokes, I would imagine. Please tell me this is a normal marker. Yeah, <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. Please give me a normal marker. Uh, this, is a, this is a black acrylic marker and it's got a massive chisel nib on it. I've got a turquoise one of these. I can't remember where it came from. It was probably a subscription box. It usually is with things like that that I wouldn't normally... Can I just twist this? No, nope. it's too, too too chunky. Right, at least I can get the lid off it. Yep, so you can see that's a more traditional sort of chisel nib type effort. Very, very chunky. Benefits of this, huge amount of coverage very quickly. So if you wanted to make large parts of your canvas black, this is your bad boy for that. Now, in addition to that, we have two slightly more slimline jobs here. And uh, this is the, I'm sure this is the one I've got that's... um. Uh, the, in the chunkier nib is this colour here. Yeah, I'm going to have to go and find out. It's really bugging me. So this is the one that I have from before. Never been used again. Um, so th are these the same colour? Yes, these are the same colour. Op opulent turquoise. Yes, op opulent turquoise. Okay. I'm just going to get my craft knife out for, out for this. I'm sick of fiddling about with these. Okay, so we've got um, a, a rounded tip here. 
And this will give you, I'm sure it will tell us somewhere, two to three millimeter line width. And this, the, there's an opacity chart on the back as well, and it's saying that this is really, really, really opaque. And we've got a rather attractive lime green color. The thing is as well, I have loads and loads of paint markers already. I don't think I've got anything in this sort of shade of green though, to be fair. So we'll see what it's like. So this has got the same tip as the turquoise one. And we've got two little skinny minis as well. And these ones are one to two millimeter line width. So the same shape of tip on them, just in a smaller version. This is the worst part of this. Like stuff like this makes me grumpy. Edding, whoever designed your packaging wants to be um, reconsidered for their position. I'm gonna try from the top this time and try not to take my hand off. Oh yeah, they look, they look, oh look, look, ooh. I don't know how I feel about these. I feel like that nib is really long um, and it wouldn't take much to, to damage it. I've only got so many hours to film and edit this video. <laughs> Come on. Worst packaging ever. Things I do for YouTube. Okay, so yeah, I'm a bit concerned about the length of this nib. Quite an interesting selection of colours. If I take the black out, the, well, black and white are always good to have. Um, but that's actually quite a, um, uh, that's actually quite a nice selection of colours. I'm a bit concerned about the squeezy tube effort here. Obviously, that's really good if you want to do like impasto style, like textured work. I might have to smooth it out with a paintbrush, which they haven't provided us with. No, no, no paintbrush. Okay. The crux of the matter is we've got a pencil and we've got some paint pens. Let's take a look at our bottle post, learn some more about the stuff in the box and also learn a bit more about our artist and most other things. Okay, so an acrylic adventure. And they've pictured the supplies here and it's looking like everyone's getting the same supplies. And when I say that, I mean the same colours, uh, which makes me very happy. So they talk about the company Edding. Uh, I've got quite a lot of their supplies and various things. Uh, so it tells you a little bit about them there. And then they talk about the acrylic range. So they're basically pushing these pens here. The range is compact and uncomplicated, offers you everything you need to achieve outstanding results on a wide range of painting surfaces. The acrylic 3D double liners, that's the toothpaste tube ones, in the range with highly pigmented acrylic paint and artist quality are suitable for various application techniques and effects. Well, they kind of have to be considering they don't look like a marker. Okay, anyway. Right, so let's talk about this acro 3D double liner. Take a close look at the flexible tube in your box. That's if you can get into it. You have noticed that it has two different dispensing attachments and fits like a pen in your hand. Well, that's the biggest pen I've ever used. <laughs> These are perfect for applying paint in fine and broad strokes to your chosen painting surface. This gives you exciting 3D effects and structures. In addition, as in classic acrylic painting, many different techniques such as watercolour, dabbing, it says scra scra scravito. Is that a cross between graffiti and something else. I, I do not know. Uh, which makes for a lot of fun. Okay. Recommended retail price is €7.69 a tube. So they've got a little bit of a tutorial here on different ways you can use the double liner. You know, like outlining, um, single line art, pointillism. That, see, that would be fun. That This this would be good for this kind of thing. The markers, uh, these are a bit more the what I am familiar with. Three different stroke widths. You can colour in larger, medium-sized areas and create beautiful lettering or set fine accents. These are suitable for both light and dark backgrounds. Please note the coverage symbol on the pen. So that's what I was talking about earlier, the opacity. Now, please tell me all of these are opaque because if they're not, I'm going to lose it. The opacity level is different. So not only are we limited by the fact that the colour only comes in one nib size, but they're putting further restrictions on what we can and can't do because of the opacity. The pink one is transparent. I would be super excited to put that over black. Like, hello, this is opaque, this is transparent. Whereas the white has a medium transparency, so you could probably layer that one up and get away with it. Uh, the green's the same. And the turquoise is a is a, is an opaque pen. Okay, so the opacity rating on this is in the middle as well. I don't really know how to feel about that. I, I'm gonna sit on that. I'm gonna simmer on that for a wee while. The broad nib marker. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the this is the chunky monkey chisel tip. Applying rich colour to larger areas, the chisel tip also makes it good for finer details. So you can see here they've turned it on their on its end and you can use it for finer lines. The medium acrylic markers. 
All rounder can master small areas, outlines, and even hand lettering. And the fine marker starts where your brushes stop for delicate touches and fine details. My question is, why would they not make a white marker opaque? I don't understand why they wouldn't make that opaque. Maybe they can't. Maybe it's to do with the chemical makeup of it. I just find that slightly odd. From what they've done here, though, it looks as if you can lay it up and get it closer to being opaque if that's what you want. But that's one of the things about using paint markers. That's why it's fun. It's because they are opaque. Okay, so they've got a little lesson here on how to use your acrylic markers in general. Some of these are quite nice. And they even talk about watering them down to get painterly effect, which is good too, because I do that sometimes. I quite like that. And here's the colour chart as well. There's some pretty attractive colours in there. Kind of lacking in the greens, but that's okay. If As long as they've got a good indigo colour, I'll usually let them away with it and there isn't one. <laughs> There's the Elegant Midnight, which is just a dark blue. It's not indigo though. I don't know. Okay, so the paper here. The paper in this pad is specially tailored to, pr to, the, to the properties of your new Edding Acrylic products because it's made by the same people, so that makes sense as well. They're designed to work together. A unique linen embossing adds to the canvas-like texture of the eight sheets. Okay, so it's going to be knobbly bobbly, but it's going to be in, like kind of cross hatches. Um, this special quality of the 300 GSM sheet promotes the colour brilliance and absorbency of the acid-free and age-resistant paper. Due to the nature of the surface, the paper, paper is less susceptible to dust and dirt deposits. I would disagree with that entirely. Each page of the pad is glued along the edge, along one edge, making it easy to remove. Okay, so it's it's a pad. The Viking pencil. This is a Viking Rollo Artist drawing pencil. It's made in Denmark. Finest Californian cedar wood, which everyone seems to, to mention. Oh, it's an H pencil. It tells us down here. It doesn't actually say it on the, on the pencil. It says a number four, but it says here it's an H pencil. So that's going to be a sketching pencil. Our co-captain, Leon Ferrin, and uh, yeah, graffiti style, slightly abstract. So there's a little bit about, a little bit about the artwork and themselves, and a little mini gallery here. This is crazy stuff. This is crazy beans, but in a nice way. Again, very. They always pick people with very distinctive art styles for their co-captains. So we've got some tips here from our co-captain as well as the how-to do video. So if you scan the QR code, you can go and see how they make their artwork. Okay, so for this here, attach four papers to the table so that they do not move constantly in different directions. Interesting. It says you can then prime with the Edding 3D double liner. Not too much, otherwise the paper curls. So you probably in your best interest to tape your paper down as well. Then you can paint with the remaining marker on it. I would determine the rough structure with the edding marker broad. Is that this one? What, you, what do you actually want to paint? What looks great on four individual sheets? Just hang them and have a look with some distance. With the five one hundreds, okay, right, I don't, okay, five one hundreds are the middle sized ones. You can add finer contours, play with the colours and try it with some shapes. Combine the colours and feel free to use a brush because the colours are great to spread. At the very end, you can set highlights with the thinnest eddings. Right, we're just not going to talk about that. <laughs> art hacks with Crypto Pixel. Acrylic marker art is funny. You have to control. You have control over paint like you would have over a pen, and uh, some bits and bobs here. And uh, she's talking about using the the toothpaste tube to create texture for hair down here. That's a really nice touch. I like that. Ah, uh, this is great. Sailor of the month. Samira. 24 years old, born and raised in Germany. Look at her horsey picture in pencil. That is my favourite. Love it. Absolutely love it. So a little bit about them there as well. Things by Diana. Canadian illustrator and designer who lives in Taiwan. So a little bit there. Asking her questions at how she got her career started. Look, her designs are lovely. Oh, so nice. So we've got some more tips and tricks as well. So if you've not used acrylic markers before, this is a great place to start. It's talking us through the, the I'm just going to call this the toothpaste tube because that's what it feels like. And the different marks you can make with that and what you can do with it. So that's really good as well. And this is a layering exercise. So this is to help with the opacity thing we were talking about here. Um, that's a really good way to test your materials out. I like that a lot. And we've got a step-by-step -step tutorial on making the look like wolves. 
and actually taking through you through the process from the planning <clears throat> from the planning stage. So that's really nice. I like that a lot. But we seem to be into this for sheet technique a lot as well because this is the second person that's doing it now. This is actually quite detailed. That's nice. I like that a lot. I have found as time's gone on um, with some of the tutorials, even in books as well, I'm sure you've all come across that. And you think, great, this looks like a really in-depth tutorial. And you start off well and then all of a sudden they just leave you out at sea and the picture's like nearly finished and you're like, um, where's the steps in the middle? So it's nice to see that this is fairly lengthy. Okay, this is another regular as well. Um, putting in their tuppence worth, their tips and tricks as well. So there's loads of help in this magazine this time. And actually tutorials, oh look at the colour blend. I want to do this colour blend, blend right now. Definitely want to do that. Okay, yeah, I'm enjoying the practicality. Oh, that is just so cute. That is freaking cute. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> I like this one a lot. This is my favourite and it's just because there's a gradient. Jem Jem loves a good gradient. Oh, this is Emily. We've seen her already. So this is why she cho chooses adding acrylics as well. I like they're tying this together. Superb. And this is, yeah, she's done this before. Oh, I love all this. This is really pretty. I find that quite inspiring. I just like seeing all the colours together. The Edding Challenge and how to enter. So there's a prize for this. So this is separate to the Upcrate Battle, I hope. And it's telling you what you need to do there in order to enter. And there's lots of nice things to win. Oh, it's a Polaroid memory mock-up. I like that. That's, that's actually really cute. I like that idea. That's very creative if you want to do something a bit more purposeful with your art. So the Upcrate Battle, uh, what can you see? I really, really enjoyed this box and this was acrylic paint funnily enough and it had the neon paint in it and these are amazing this one's my favorite this is the second place one this is this is stunning uh, this one appeals to me just a little bit more because it's nature but this is fabulous now i missed this one uh, this one I, this is when i wasn't well and the, this is a selection of the ones from the upcrate 30 uh, let's jump into adelie's world this was the kind of um alice in wonderland inspired box so these are quite interesting as well. Inspiration area around acrylic art. Each month we introduce you to amazing artists related to our box theme, which is obviously acrylic paint. So we've got some really nice, I like these kind of things because I like just to jump onto Instagram and follow people. I find that very inspirational too. This is really nice, really nice. Superb. Okay, and on the back cover we have our upcrate battle and this month's battle topic is come together. You can win a load of editing stuff as well, which is nice. I have no idea what I'm going to do with that. It does actually say here, use four of the A5 size sheets of paper in your box to create one large piece. So if you did that, it would be A3, so that is going to be large. So they are they are sticking with the four, the four pages theme and that will fit in with coming together. So that's quite interesting. That's given me something to think about for the next couple of days. If you want to see the Upcrate Battle video, it will be up in the next week or so. So the next like two or three videos, uh, we will get to that. But for now, we're going to test these supplies out because we have to do these kind of things. And I, I want to see how opaque these markers are because it's kind of bugging me. I don't think they're as bad as I think they're going to be, she says, hopefully. Yeah, it's got that. It's really difficult to show on camera without shining. Let's see if I can do something funky here and let you see what's going on. Nope, that's the camera, Gem. Come on now. <laughs> I don't know if that's helping at all. Um, but yeah, it's like a crisscross pattern and it looks like a really fine canvas. I'm not a particular fan of this paper, to be honest. It always feels really plasticky to me. Yeah, because it's meant to feel like a canvas. That's the whole point. Uh, but yes, I don't know. Okay, so our pencil's not going to be up to much on here. Just to give you a demonstrate. In fact, you'll probably be able to see the texture of the paper if I do that. Can you see it? Can you see it? Uh, this is meant to be a sketching pencil. Uh, it's, it's not meant for shading or anything. And that's about as much as you'd want to do with it on this paper. That feels horrible under my hand. Blah. Because um, you can feel every knobble bobble as you go along. Yeah, but for the purposes of what we need, that's absolutely grand. I just want to test to see how it erases on this paper. I've got a Loifer plastic eraser, keeping keeping the German theme going, you know. <laughs> and apart from the fact it absolutely eats your eraser, <laughs> taking off an entire corner there, uh, just because it's so textured, is <laughs> the, the graphite's lifting really well. With it being an H, 
pencil. I didn't really foresee any problems, but um, even that area there where I've put a couple of layers, <laughs> that's hilarious, a couple of layers of pencil down, it's taken it away, no problem. And because we're using acrylic uh, paint over the top of it, you're not going to see these anyway. The only thing I will say is if we do have the likes of, they're, they're talking about this pink marker not being very opaque, um, if you do have any sort of heavy pencil lines, this might kind of mix in and get a little bit muddy just because it's a bright colour. So you might want to watch out for that. Right, in terms of priming these markers, I always like to show people how to prime these. Um, basically, the tip depresses into the barrel like this. And what you're supposed to do with these types of pens is shake them. There's a ball bearing in there that mixes the paint. If I do that, you can hear it. Oh, that one's not quite so offensive. Um, so we want to give those a really, really good shake to mix the paint properly. And then what we do is we start depressing the nib onto a sheet of paper. You have to do it gently because you don't want to ruin your nib, but eventually the paint starts to travel down and it starts to soak into the nib, and once your nib is saturated, that's you ready to go. So obviously I have a couple of pens to do here. So I'm going to make a start. So I'll demonstrate with the first one, which is going to be this attractive green shade, and then I'll just do the rest off camera. Let me start pressing down. Now you can press quickly, you know, you can go up and down fairly quickly, but don't press hard, that's what we don't want. And there the ink started to come down already, so I'm more or less ready to go. That's really quick. If we just give it a little test. Oh, that's nice. That's not lime green. That's quite a deal. I like that colour. Okay, right. So that one's ready to go. I'll just get the rest of these done. Then we can test them out on our paper here. That was refreshingly pleasant. It didn't take too long. So I'm going to start with the biggest one here. And I am going to whack a layer of this down. Oh... So this pen is designed for this paper and vice versa. That is a very satisfying process. It's sitting well on the paper as well. I just want to see how long it takes to dry, but I want to test some of the other colours out on top of that. So that is the black one. Up here, I also want to test my uh, toothpaste tube. So we've got a smaller nib and you're, you're literally just squeezing it out. Ooh. <laughs> That's kind of fun, actually. If we're going to leave it raised off the paper like that, because they are talking about it being 3D, I want to see how long that takes to dry, because I would be the person that would put my hand in it, and you guys know it, and I wouldn't feel myself putting my hand in it either to make matters worse. So here's the here's the wide tip. I do actually have a piping nozzle like this. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't even want to go and get a paintbrush just now. I want to leave the paintbrush for when we do the upgrade battle. I just wanted to see what this light. You can see it's not consistent. A lot of that will be to do with your squeeze consistency and where the paint is actually sitting in the tube. I have uh, problems with this hand and I have no feeling in most of my fingers and I find it very difficult to gauge squeeze pressure and I tend to go from my wrist and my elbow. So I especially would probably struggle to get a, a consistent line. I do think if I press down harder rather than squeezed harder, I might be able to do a better job because that's sitting quite high off the paper. And I know you can see that. I don't need to tilt the paper to show you that. You can see the cast shadow on it. That's a lot of paint on there. I feel you could... Um, you know, if you got trigger happy, so to speak, for want of a better phrase with this, I think you could use up a tube of this really quickly, but it would also be incredibly good fun. Right, let's have some of our other markers. Uh, this is drying quite quickly. This was my last stroke on this side, and that's the only part that's still really wet, so that that's fairly, fairly quick drying times. So here is our opulent turquoise. I feel that the nibs on these, and I'm sure I said this last time, they're just a wee bit too rounded. Like they're like dome shaped and I would have liked it to have more of a bullet shape to it just so that we can get a little bit of line variation and it's not, it's not the end of the world, but it's just a preference. I would rather have a slightly more pointy tip on it. Maybe again, because I like to use pencil, maybe that's why I feel that way, but I just thought it was worth pointing out. So that turquoise colour is lovely. I'm really liking this green colour too. Uh, most of you all know, if you watch any of my other videos, I am a, a fan of green. And I can see that this is slightly more transparent just when I'm putting that down there. But see, I think we'll be able to layer these up and it's not going to be a problem. So they're the same nib sizes. The ink flow or paint flow seems to be really good on them as well. You know, I was getting a bit of movement in there and there was no issues. And uh, we've got this. That, this is awful. Like... Because it is slightly transparent as well, it just makes it feel watery. It's still very vibrant though, but if you're moving quickly with it, eh. What a fabulous selection of colours though. I, I, <laughs> upgrade, I applaud you for the colour palette this month. Okay, still not dry over here. Mostly dry. I can see my drag marks as well. Uh, chisel tips, yep, yeah, not exactly Jem's favourite. So let's start 
Now, that's interesting. My nib, my small nib has got paint all the way around it. And obviously when I was using this end, I was squeezing it. Some of it's still going to go in the other direction. And I'm just going to show you how much you see on the corner of this rather attractive tissue paper. But you're going to have to wipe that off and try and keep that clean. And it's all squished in the cap as well. Can you see that in there too? So th these are actually going to be quite messy, but that's okay. Stuff like this, you can't get fun without messy sometimes. Sometimes, oh god, that sounded terrible. So let's just see how this sits on top of the black. Just put a little bit on there. Sometimes if paint's wet, it picks up the colour underneath, it like sucks it up like a sponge. I zoom in a little bit. Look, that's so pretty, those colours. So let's try everything else. I haven't tried the white, obviously. Now these have had a good shake. So let's try a little block of solid colour and then a wiggly line. Yep, so the black's shown through that. It's not terrible though. It's not terrible. Yeah, see that's disappointing. If anything, if I wanted anything to be, you know, real to really stand out on black, I would have been to pink. So you can see these ones are slightly more opaque. Although I don't see much of a difference between that and the white one. That's because they have the same opacity. That makes sense. Okay. The consistency and opacity, how many times have I said opacity, <laughs> in the turquoise pen is far more consistent with the likes of the Molotov and the Posca pens. Uh, you know, they're, they're pretty solid. The, there is nothing to say though that we can't build these up and that is what I'm going to try and do after they have dried. I've still got a tiny damp bit in the corner here but I can feel it. it's like kind of tacky under my finger but it's not, not a disaster. Uh, this still looks really wet. Yeah, it is really wet. So we're not touching that anytime soon. I would have expected this to be like a bit more of a quick drying formula just for the fact that it's going to be used in larger quantities. You know, there's going to be a, a higher concentration concentration of it in one area. Yeah, these these ones are dry. They, they're dry. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, and they almost look dry on here as well. So these pens are, you know, they're, they're pretty speedy. This stuff, I, I would kind of leave that till last because it's really wet. Really got me a flat brush here. I'm not going to start watering these down or anything because that, they're not really designed for that. I'll maybe do a bit of that in the actual upcrate battle. But I'm just interested to, in fact, I'm not even going to squeeze any more out the, the tube. This is so thick. I can actually lift a layer off the top there and still have loads left. I just want to see what it's like if we spread it out. Now, see, that's nice. That feels nice. And it feels really nice on this paper. And you can really, you know, you could really like, obviously not with this big flat brush, it's a bit, a bit extreme, but you could get some really soft edges with this. I actually really like that with a paintbrush, and I'll bet you that dries quicker. <laughs> so let's just see if I can pick up a little bit off this end here. I don't see that drying anytime soon. I think that's a crazy idea. Um, let's just see what we're like for opacity when we're spread out at a normal thickness. Obviously that's going to look opaque there because there's about six times as much paint on that as there is on anything else. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're seeing black through again. I, I, I'm assuming you would be able to build that up and it would look a little bit more like the, the 3D squish out that we did earlier. But I just thought that was worth testing to see what's what. Now these have dried and you can see the black is starting to come through a little bit. It is not terrible. So let's go back over this and see First of all, how the paper likes it or doesn't like it. Kind of difficult to go back over my wiggly lines again. <laughs> yeah, the turquoise is doing the best job. That second layer of the turquoise is like <laughs> fabulous. I think you're going to have to do a little bit of work with this white. And the pink's having, the pink's struggling. And it is going to continue to, I don't think you're going to be able to build that enough to you know, make it really, really stand out. It's kind of just like fading away in there. But that's what we're here for, to test these things out. Conclusions from this. Uh, I think this is a novel idea. I do not think this is the place for it. I would be wanting to use this on a big, big canvas. And I know they're talking about four sheets that you're going to put together, but even at that, I think there's a slight design fault in the fact that when you squeeze at both ends, even if you're only using one end, so you're going to end up with a really messy cap. And these are slight, this type of idea is supposed to be designed to make painting less messy. Ugh, might have to augment their design slightly, but I like the idea behind it. And the whole piping nozzle thing really appeals to me because that's what I used to do many moons ago before I decided to do silly things like art videos. The rest of these pens are fabulous. I just feel, I feel a little bit let down by the pink because unless you're going to use it on the white, 
it's going to struggle to maintain its vibrancy the way the other colours are. Because look at these, look at the green and the turquoise here. They're just having a party to themselves on top of that black. I do like this paint, the fact that we can smooth it out. And that is dry as well. This nowhere near dry, nowhere near. Uh, and it looks as if it'll never dry, to be honest. I, I wouldn't have expected this massive panel here to start to dry out. But I thought these kind of like diddlier lines might, you know. So be very, very careful with that. So in terms of the supplies, it's nice to have a fun colour selection. That's the thing I like most about this box is the colour selection. The prompt is definitely an interesting one and I like the fact that they're nudging you in a certain direction with the four sheets that come together. So that's that's nice to, to be able to work with. The reality of it is, and this is something that com comes up in the comments quite a lot, I like this as a box together. Realistically, how much am I going to use these supplies after the fact? Because what I'm finding now is there's many boxes that I really enjoy and I actually quite like the supplies. But having been arting for a while now, there are things that I just never use again. They get used once and then they just kind of sit and languish away in a box somewhere. These acrylic markers, with the exception of the pink one and probably the white one because I've got better white ones already, these will get used because acrylic markers is something that I do like to use. I like to uh, customise notebook covers and these are great for stuff like this. So for me, these supplies will definitely get used. The, the toothpaste tube one, maybe not so much. I think I'll probably put these in the stash shop after the um after the upgrade battle so if anybody just wants to have a shot at them you can pick them up relatively cheap from the website which is this address here so that's it for today guys i would love to hear your thoughts on this box you guys don't hold back would love to hear what you think about this and whether you think the upgrade battle prompt is a good one or an absolute nightmare thanks very much for watching thanks for coming and hanging out guys please stay safe take care of each other and I will see you back in the cave next week for another video. So have a great day everyone and bye bye for now.